May I ask those still exiting the chamber to please do so quietly. Thank you very much. And the final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 860 in the name of Jeremy Balfour on Glow Gold September. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. May I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to please press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Jeremy Balfour to open the debate around seven minutes, please, Mr Balfour. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I thank all members from different parties who supported the motion in my name? And can I welcome some members from the Glow Gold Scotland team to the Parliament today who are sitting in the public gallery listening to this debate? And can I congratulate them on all they have done in the last few months? Glow Gold Scotland was only set up in February of this year for the purpose of campaigning and to highlight the, the awareness of childhood cancer. While I was growing up, cancer was a word that people didn't really use. People were reluctant to use it. But I'm pleased that over the last few years, uh, charities working in this sector, governments from all parties and the media have raised the awareness of cancer in Scotland, and people are far more willing to talk about it now. Sadly, the same cannot be said for childhood cancer. Too often, people do not want to talk about it or are scared to think about it. Glow Glowed Scotland team came together to raise awareness of this issue and to persuade charities and others to come together to make this month the month that we remember and raise awareness of childhood cancer. At the start of this month, many buildings across Scotland were lit up in gold as a memorial to children who have sadly died from cancer. For example, here in Edinburgh, the castle, the Edinburgh Royal College of Physicians, in Inverness, uh, the Ness Bridge, the, the Falkirk Wheel, and the Custom House in Stranraer, just to name a few examples. Here uh, in Edinburgh, Lothian buses painted a bus gold, and it was used to take people around the city to show them the buildings that had been lit up. This is a remarkable campaign, run by a small number of volunteers, and I am sure it will grow in strength over the next few years. Fortunately, Deputy Presiding Officer, cancer is rare in Scotland, but it is still the biggest cause of death in children under 16 in the UK. Around 130 children aged 0 to 14 are diagnosed with cancer in Scotland. Around 60 children under the age of 5 are diagnosed with cancer every year. Survival is improving. Three quarters of children diagnosed with cancer in the UK will now survive beyond 10 years, compared to only a third back in the 1970s. But there is still a need to raise awareness about what cancer does and how it comes about. I believe parents need to be given more information about childhood cancer, both when a child is born and also as the child grows up. As many of us will be aware, lots of information is given to parents about different conditions and about different things that might face their child. But my understanding is that little, if anything, is given about childhood cancer. I believe that needs to change, and I believe appropriate information needs to be given to parents. But not just to parents, but also to general practitioners as well. Clearly, cancer is rare, and often GPs will be slow to diagnose it because they think it is some other condition. And I believe more training needs to be given to doctors, both who are training to be GPs, but also those who are in GP practices to be reminded of what to look for. Children's cancers are biologically very different from adult cancer. Cancer normally affects older people because of the genetic errors that come about in healthy cells. Sadly, for children, acute leukemia 
is the most commonly diagnosed cancer in children. Brain tumours and cancers of the spinal cord account for around a quarter of children's cancers. Whilst the number of children surviving cancer has improved, there does need more research and work done on those children and the effects it has on them later in life. There has been a huge progress into the genetic understanding of children's cancers. Technology has improved. But I think we as a parliament and as a nation need to commit to more funding to go to charities looking at this. We cannot simply concentrate on adult cancer and forget about children's cancer. I was honoured a couple of Fridays ago to attend a dinner organised by a family who lost their first child to cancer. The child was born with a tumour and sadly the child died just after a few months. Out of this tragedy and sadness, this family has gone on to raise a fantastic amount of money. That money is given to support families across Scotland, but as importantly, they are now funding two PhDs into this area. They, as a family, are committed for the next four years to raise money so that one PhD student can complete more studies into childhood cancer. Because child children's cancer is on a small number, that means medicines need more testing, it means clinical research is harder, and often adult medicines which are used in cancer simply do not work effectively for children under 16. To lose a child is the worst thing a parent can ever go through. To lose a child to cancer often brings about turmoil and hardship within a whole family. For a mother or father to see a child suffering and know they cannot do anything about it, often that suffering will go on months, if not years. And we need to raise the awareness that cancer should be diagnosed at the earliest possible moment. At the dinner I referred to, a consultant here at the Sick Kids inspired me and all those in the room about the commitment emotionally and intellectually they are given here in Scotland, and it is an example to us all. More, so, more research needs to be done. A greater awareness of the issue here in Scotland needs to be raised, and I am sure that over the next few years, more and more people will become aware, not just of this campaign, but more importantly, of the issue behind it. Thank you, Deputy Providing Officer. Thank you, Mr Balfour. I now move to the open debate. I first of all call Stuart McMillan to be followed by Brian Whittle. Speeches of around four minutes, please. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. First of all, I want to congratulate Jeremy Balfour on securing this debate. As we know, September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and it's a particularly poignant time, uh, just weeks prior to children going back to school after a, a fun summer. Uh, for other young children, they will be starting school for the first time. At every school gate, parents will be waving their kids off to school uh, on their first day, and social media is covered in pictures of proud children and proud parents. It's, it certainly is a wonderful day for most families. Unfortunately, this isn't the case for so many. Uh, with just under 12 children being diagnosed with childhood cancer every day, uh, so many families will have a, a very different start to the school year. And of these children diagnosed every day, three will die. Childhood cancer remains uh, today the biggest killer of children and young adults after accidental injury. And this is a, an eye-opening statistic, with one in every 285 children and young people being diagnosed with cancer before their 20th birthday. In the last 20 years, there have been only three medications licensed for childhood cancer, compared to over 80 medications in the last five years for adult cancers. And this gives an idea uh, of the void of research funding uh, that childhood cancer faces, and is the reason why the Go Gold in September awareness campaign was started. Now, this year, uh, there is this new and growing campaign called Glow Gold in September for childhood cancer. It, it is working as part of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, to encourage iconic uh, global buildings uh, to light up, uh, light up gold for childhood cancer. It's a grassroots campaign which is having a global impact and I, am, I generally have been remarkably impressed by how many major landmarks uh, are actually lighting up around the world. 
as well as including in my own constituency the, the Beacon Arts Centre, the Victoria Tower and the Custom House, to name just three. In my constituency of Greenock and Inverclyde, an inspirational story uh, is happening. Gillian Mowat uh, is currently running the, the local campaign appealing to the whole of Inverclyde to light up gold in a visible show of support in September for all childhood cancer patients. Gillian and her husband Paul were devastated when Nathan was diagnosed with acute uh, lymphoblastic leukaemia uh, just before his fourth birthday. Nathan immediately had to undergo life-saving chemotherapy uh, treatment and also spent weeks in hospital. And since then, he has undergone hours of treatment with chemotherapy to blast the cancerous cells and he faces another two years of maintenance treatment. And as a result of this, he's got no way of fighting infections and has to be rushed to hospital if he has got any spike in temperature. Even a cold could have a devastating consequence for Nathan. So everything needs to be monitored. Now, Gillian's bravery and through all of this is apparent. She has spoken candidly about the impact Nathan's fight has had on her, on her family's life, and especially her three-year-old daughter, Annabelle. Now, Gillian has touched the hearts of the people of Inverclyde when she spoke about their ordeal after little Nathan was diagnosed with the disease. The community has been 100% behind uh, Gillian's campaign with the uh, Greenwood Morton Football Club inviting Nathan to be a mascot on the last day uh, of the, the season in May and fans held up cards uh, to show the support for the Glow Goal campaign and, that, as I said, mentioned a few moments ago, the Beacon Arts Centre uh, and, and the Greenwood Waterfront uh, shone gold on the September the 1st and I was at the launch uh, that particular evening. Uh, I am proud to support Inverclyde mother, Gillian Mowat and her family and also her son, Nathan, uh, and also the wider Glow Goal campaign. And I would like to thank them personally for doing such great work in highlighting the issue uh, of childhood cancer to a wider public. Presiding officer, whilst the number of children surviving cancer has improved, uh, it's crucial that we research the long-term effects of the treatments on their health and well-being. And a recent study showed that while many survivors of children, children's cancers do have healthy lives, a number of children are faced with long-term health issues such as disability and reduced immunity. Huge progress is being made in the genetic understanding of child children's cancers, as well as in advances in technology, as uh, Jeremy Balfour touched upon, and also the development of personalised medicine. But, presiding officer, uh, in summary, children are our future. They need us to fight for them, as they are not yet old enough to fight for themselves. And they are the doctors, the teachers, the scientists of the future. So we all need to do our bit to actually give them that chance that they actually deserve and therefore I do support the Global Com campaign and I support the calls for increased funding for research to into looking at, into child, uh, children's cancer. Thank you. I now call Brian Whittle to be followed by Anna Sarwar. Uh, thank you Deputy Presiding Officer. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak in the Chamber in support of the motion brought forward by my colleague Jeremy Balfour and what is a very emotive topic. It has to be one of the scariest words in the human language, cancer. To be diagnosed has to be every person's nightmare, or to hear that a loved one has this terrible condition is something that too many of us have had to endure. I'm most certainly not alone in having to deal with the shock of a family and friends being diagnosed with cancer. However, to be told your child has cancer, or even having been born with cancer, is a burden that none of us can contemplate bearing, or at the very least hope that we never have to. Now, Presiding Officer, I have spoken several times recently in this chamber advocating the need for us to focus on more preventable disease. Most members know my belief that encouraging an active healthy lifestyle through education will go a long way to tackling the majority of Scotland's health issues and relieve some of the pressure on our health service. However, although there is strong evidence to suggest that having an active healthy lifestyle can in some cases help to prevent certain types of cancer and will certainly help in the treatment and rehabilitation from cancer. There is a long way to go before we understand the causes of early childhood cancers and the potential early indicators. And I recognise the distinction that has to be made here and that distinction is important as we endeavour to support the patients and their families during this difficult time. There is no understanding as to why you or me or anyone else who has to face this. Importantly though, the really positive news is that with the work from the likes of the cancer charities funding research and the university's research, cancer survival rates continue to grow with a real ambition of eventually eradicating cancer deaths. 
once the initial shock of diagnosis subsides, the recognition of the success rates that modern treatments can give must allow a certain comfort and that the diagnosis is not the likely sentence it used to be. That said, it is crucial that the work on cancer treatments and the prevention continues at pace if we are to realise the dream of 100% rehabilitation from a cancer diagnosis. There are some amazing people out there doing incredible work and we must keep their efforts at the forefront of our minds. Everything from seeking sponsorship for fun runs and events, and, and just for clarity, I'm not volunteering myself here. Uh, I think the fallout from the NHS cost uh, would be more than I could raise. Through to the raising the issue today in the Scottish Parliament, we will endeavour to highlight the work being done in seeking a cancer cure and help maintain the spotlight on that work until the day that the word cancer no longer holds the dread it once did. I am delighted to support this motion and delighted to bring continued publicity to the Glow Gold September campaign and the continuing work in this field. Thank you. And the last of the open contributions is from Anna Sarwar. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I start by congratulating Jeremy Ball for bringing forward uh, this debate and indeed for bringing forward the motion uh, in the first place and also to pay tribute to all the campaigners and organisers of the Glow Gold campaign. Thank you for your hard work and your efforts and highlighting this really, really important cause. And I welcome the opportunity to speak in support, not just of this awareness campaign, but actually on the issue of childhood cancer. In recent years, we have seen the development of campaigns that have really touched the consciousness of everyday lives of everyday people. The Pink Ribbon of Breast Cancer, Macmillan's Coffee Mornings, or World AIDS Day being just a few examples. And I hope that seeing iconic Scottish buildings such as the Kelpies or Edinburgh Castle glowing gold will similarly place at the forefront of our minds the issue of childhood cancer. Every year around 1,600 children across the UK are diagnosed with some form of cancer. That's 1,600 children and their families living every day with the consequences of a cancer diagnosis. Five children every day diagnosed with cancer. That's one in every 500 children up to the age of 14. And while mercifully relatively rare, it is still the biggest cause of death in children in the UK. And as a parent, I can only imagine the emotions and challenges families go through in these really difficult circumstances. It can't be easy, Deputy Praising Officer. That is why we have to do what we can to help. It's vital that the children get the clinical support they need. But as we heard so powerfully at First Minister's questions, there is a postcode lottery on access to new medicines. So too in Scotland with children with cancer, where access to innovative medicine is a key issue and one that the Scottish Government has to address. And I think we all have, an, have a responsibility to address. But it's also important for families to get emotional support. It is easy just to think of the patient. This will have impact on fellow siblings or indeed the family, be it the parents or the wider family. And I believe a big part of that is seeing others in their corner, fighting to highlight the issue and, and raise awareness more widely. And seeing Edinburgh Castle or the Kelpies, magnificent as they even are, glowing gold in support of childhood cancer awareness will send a powerful message to those affected families that we are with them as they fight this terrible disease. Indeed, this debate today highlights the fact that we take that issue so importantly. And importantly, with increased public awareness, we would hope there follows greater resource and research into better and more effective medical treatments. Indeed, given that the children's cancer risk factors are not well understood, in part because this group of cancers are thankfully relatively rare and diverse, increased research into causes and treatment of childhood cancers is essential. Research that one day, I hope, will help rid us of this terrible disease. Now, I'm surprised that uh, our uh, fellow parliamentarian, Jeremy Balfour, didn't use the opportunity of the debate to make a direct request for us to glow the Parliament gold as an opportunity. So that's a request I'm putting to you directly, Deputy Prairie Officer, and I hope you'll take that up with uh, the Parliamentary Bureau. Perhaps we can do that as next part of next year's campaign, that we can send a symbol from this Parliament to all those families that we take this issue very, very seriously. I know that we are all proud to wear our badge uh, today, I know we're all proud to support this campaign. I want to thank the campaigners again for their incredible work. And I hope 
at least in my lifetime, that we can find a cure to this terrible condition. Now move to the closing contribution from Aileen Campbell. Minister, around seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, President Officer. Uh, and I, too, add my thanks to uh, Jeremy uh, Balfour for securing uh, this debate during Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. And also want to pay thanks uh, to the Glow Gold campaigners who are here in the Parliament this afternoon. Uh, Jeremy Balfour's uh, motion today gives us an opportunity not just to acknowledge the great work done by volunteers to raise awareness, but also though to pay tribute to the children and the young people who are dealing with a diagnosis of cancer and their families. And uh, I'd like to also thank uh, Stuart McMillan for raising the inspirational work of his constituent, Gillian Mowat, and the story of her son, Nathan. And I'm sure we all want to ensure that Nathan uh, receives our very best wishes from across the Parliament Chamber. As others have said, though, thankfully, cancer is rare in children and young people in Scotland with less than 1% of all cancers being diagnosed in children. But any diagnosis of cancer is absolutely devastating and it seems particularly cruel when it's faced by our most young in society, by our children. Early diagnosis is critical with all cancers, regardless of age, and raising awareness is so important to getting to that early diagnosis, an important point that was underpinned throughout uh, uh, Jeremy Balfour's contribution. To support GPs to refer and diagnose cancer as early as possible, we commissioned a full review of the Scottish referral guidelines for suspected cancer. The review, led by Healthcare Improvement Scotland in 2014, includes specific guidelines for identifying suspected cancer in children, teenagers and in young adults. And these guidelines have been supported by the distribution of over 16,000 copies of the Quick Reference Guide and in February this year, an app was launched. And I hope this goes some way to provide some reassurance to Jeremy Balfour and others that raising awareness amongst our GPs is something that we are actively working on and want to work to continue to improve to ensure that when parents present at a surgery that their concerns are acted upon with a complete knowledge and understanding by the GP that they are going to. Um, but diagnosis is only ever the first step and cancer services need to ensure that the right treatment at the right time is delivered to every child regardless of their diagnosis or of their location. And in recognition of this, we set up the Managed Service Network for Children and Young People with Cancer in 2011. And as many of you will know, it is charged by the Scottish Government with bringing about improvements to the treatment, to the care and to the support of children and young people with cancer up to the age of 25. Their second cancer plan was launched in February this year with an ambitious programme of work for the next three years. And I wish to recognise here the good work that that network has achieved since its formation, bringing together different members of the cancer community with the same aim of ensuring that Scotland's children get the best possible treatment and that children are at the heart of all their services. We know, though, that cancer poses a significant challenge for all of us now and in the future. And there's also good news, though. More people than ever before are surviving after cancer. And this is very welcome, but we must always strive to do better. We want to be amongst the best in the world, and that is why we have put in place our new cancer strategy. Beating cancer, ambition and action, which the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport launched earlier this year, will help meet us meet some of those challenges. And we've set out a range of ambitious actions to improve the prevention of cancer, as well as the detection, the diagnosis, the treatment and the aftercare of people affected by cancer. And this strategy is our blueprint to help reduce health inequalities, to improve experiences of care and ultimately of outcomes for people with cancer. And we've backed up this with investment of more than 100 million over the next five years. And within this investment includes funding of up to 2.5 million over that time period to enable the managed service network for children and young people with cancer to lead and deliver the improvements set out in their work plan. The Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport is due to meet the co-chairs of the Managed Service Net Network next month to discuss the progress and the network's priorities for the next year. And the network works, uh, network works closely with the third sector organisations in this area and has children and families represented 
on its boards. Certainly that was something we were always very keen to do across the government, is to ensure that the voices of children are heard at every level. And this gives valuable insight into how cancer care is delivered across Scotland and how it should be delivered in the future. For instance, I'm really interested in how we support the siblings of the children with cancer. And I met, when I was first elected back in 2007, some childhood survivors of cancer. And it's that meeting has always stayed uh, with me and the messages that I got from them. But I was moved by a presentation of a sibling who'd lost his sister to cancer and his very candid emotions of devastation at his sister's diagnosis, the feelings of jealousy of his sister being given all the attention, the guilt he felt over that jealousy, the loneliness, the sadness, and then the utter grief over his loss. And it's that holistic look at the whole family that we need to be mindful of when we're treating a child with cancer. And a point that's been made well by Stuart McMillan, Jeremy Balfour, and others who've contributed today. And in fact, I just wanted to pick up on some of the points as well that Jeremy Balfour made around bereavement. And um, also, I think that that's an area that we probably do need to do a bit more of and to be a bit more open in Scotland about how we talk about grief and how we talk about loss. Um, I also, for me, underpin some of the discussions we've had today, the need to ensure the principles of getting it right for every child are understood by everybody who has a role to play in the good care of our children. And for instance, in helping with the education that has been missed by some of the children who are undergoing treatment to get over their diagnosis. Through our Detect Cancer Early programme, we've also though provided the Teenage Cancer Trust with funding to support and extend the charity's work delivering free cancer awareness sessions in school, in colleges and in universities. And this education programme provides information to encourage young people to give their older family members a nudge to make sure that they know the benefits of early presentation. In concluding, presiding officer, I'm pleased that amongst the list of iconic buildings across Scotland that are glowing gold uh, this month, that the Scottish Government is also playing its part with our buildings of St Andrew's House and Victoria Quay lit up gold uh, to mark the campaign that we're here to celebrate and support today. And I'll be wearing my pin not just to raise awareness, but also to salute those brave children who are undergoing treatment as we speak. And I, and, I wish, and I know everyone here will wish them all the very best on their journey. My thoughts are with them and their families. So to conclude, I just want to say many thanks to everyone participating today in today's debate. Jeremy Balfour for raising it, Stuart McMillan, Brian Whittle and Anna Sarwar. Parliament, I think, is at its strongest when it unites behind a common goal. And in this case, it's ensuring the very best for our children and raising awareness of cancer in childhood. And we're also united in our support to the campaigners and their selfless work. So again, thank you to Jeremy Balfour. Thank you to everyone who's been involved in raising awareness. And thank you to everyone who's positively and constructively contributed to this very uh, uh, unifying uh, campaign uh, uh, debate today. So thank you. This meeting is suspended until 2.30 p.m. <laughs>